great football team with a lot of moral fiber and a lot of character, and they showed it. Shout, a Buffalo football podcast, hosted by Matt Perino and Ryan Talbot. No place else you'd rather be than right here, right now. When it's too tough for them, it's just right here. Presented by Syracuse.com and NYUP.com. The Bills make me wanna. What's up, Bills Mafia? Matt Perino here, joined by Ryan Talbot, as always. And this is another episode of Shout, uh, a Buffalo football co- podcast covering the Buffalo Bills. And we're into our second episode now of a series that we launched last week where we, we asked for a, a giant mailbag of Bills offseason questions here to get us through uh, the few weeks in between the end of the virtual offseason for the Bills and the start of training camp, whenever that is. And we tackled last week uh, a, a sack question. Will the Bills have more sacks this year than last year? And we're up with another couple this week, and we're going to start off um, – with an interesting one. This question comes from Tim Stevens, and that's at Tim underscore Stevens underscore. Uh, give him a follow on uh, Twitter. Thank you so much, Tim, for, for the question. Will fans be allowed at the games? Uh, obviously, with a Buffalo Bills focus here, this season is going to be so much fun, and I want to be surrounded by the Bills Mafia. And I think to start off with, it, it is a fun season because the, you know we're talking about a team that not only you know, has become very relevant under the Sean McDermott, Brandon Bean regime, but now is, is potentially in the mix for an AFC uh, East crown for the first time in 25 years and a real contender in the AFC. I, I saw it last night. Field Yates uh, put out a stat uh, that uh, the Bills have the highest percentage of snap continuity uh, from last season to this season uh, of any team in the NFL. So that means that the Bills are returning 88% of their starting snaps from 2019 to 2020, and that's the highest number in the NFL, which is great, but are we going to have a season? So, I mean, let's start there, though, first and foremost. Like, Ryan, how much of a bummer is it that we're looking at a potential season where Bills fans can be excited about a team that's going to be good, and there's all of these clouds hanging over it? Yeah, you know, that that is concerning, especially from that fan standpoint. Um, it, it's just one of those things where I, I think that all these other leagues are, are kind of going to be the guinea pig for the NFL, so to speak, where MLB, NBA, NHL, see how it goes with them. See, do players get COVID in season when the season begins? How, what do they do? How do they deal with that? Um, and then they're going to go from there. So, I mean, you're right. We're not out of the woods yet in terms of there's going to be a season as a 100% certainty. That's still even on the table. I do think, and I will say when all is said and done, the NFL is going to find a way to play their season this year. I just think that uh, they are driven to get this done. I think it's something that if these other leagues are going to have something, even if it is a shortened league like an MLB and things like that, the NFL is going to feel confident that they can get that done. All right. So to start off with, I'm going to say that I think that almost no matter what, I mean, I mean, 95% sure that there will be some type of fan contingent in stadiums, just because I think that um, number one, the revenue potential there. And we're talking about in the NFL, like everybody's talking about the lost revenue of stadiums aren't filled there's no saying that, the, that they can't maybe uh, up ticket prices to kind of be a part of whatever kind of um, situation where there's a lower amount of fans in, in the seats. So I think that number one, they'll try to find a way to have fans in the stands at some point this season. And let's caveat at some point this season, there may not be a situation where you could start the season in September, especially if the, if um, the NFL decides to start the season in September where fans are going to be in there right away. It might be a, a process where, you know, Dr. Anthony Fauci came out last week and said, Hey, we're, we're very confident that there's going to be a, a vaccine at some point in 2020 or early 2021. So if that's the case, then you could start to implement even more fans as the season goes on. So I think at some point in the season, that will happen. But I think that, you know, to get to a starting point, whether it be, 
you know, early September when the season is set to, to start or maybe pushing off the season, I think that's an interesting option. You know, I don't think enough people are talking about, okay, the Major League Baseball is coming back and the National Basketball Association is coming back in July. Give them a little bit of runway to kind of test this thing out. And I know the NBA is doing it without fans. We'll see what the, you know, what MLB looks like. Uh, but I think that the more time that you can take to do this the right way, the better it is for all parties involved. Yeah, I agree with that. But I'm going to be the Debbie Downer in, in this situation. I'm going to say no fans. Wow. And I hate to say it. It, th there would absolutely be lost revenue, as you mentioned, but the NFL is the one sport where you could get away with it because of the TV contracts that they have and all the money that would be coming in that way. I just don't see a way that they could police the tailgating that would go on before the games. And, and you've been out there. You've seen it firsthand. It's people that are shoulder to shoulder. They're drinking. They're, uh, they're, they're eating food. There's uh, so many things in play there. And yeah, you can take everyone's temperature as they're coming in, whether it, it's a percentage of the fans or whatever the case may be, but you can't control what happens even in the game. You could enter the game without a fever and leave with one, believe it or not, you know, things like that can happen. You, would you have the concession stands open? Cause then you're going to have more people that are going to be within that six feet of social distancing. There's just so many potential questions in terms of, Will there be fans in the stands and how would it work? I just don't see it happening. Now, I, I do like that you left the door open a little bit to say at the end of the year, especially if that vaccine comes sooner rather than later. If that comes to fruition, yeah, I, I think I could actually change my answer a little bit. But I'm going to say no fans for the 2020 season, which would be a, a major disappointment for the Bills Mafia, considering the talent on this roster, considering the expectations, and, and just wanting to be there to see – this team that Brendan Bean and Sean McDermott have put together and put on the cusp of winning an AFC East and possibly much more. Yeah. And it's, it's funny because I think that this team has been constructed to succeed in this version of the NFL because Sean McDermott obviously harps on, you know, whatever the given situation, there's no excuses. We're going to find a way to get it done. And everybody's dealing with the same circumstances across the league. So I feel like the team aspect, you know, that's a question that I see a lot. Like how will teams be impacted by this with no crowd noise? Will they pump in crowd noise? And I think that that's something that could definitely be done. Even if you're talking about, you know, a percentage of fans, uh, the Buffalo news reported uh, last week, I believe it was Jason Wolf. Uh, a source told them that the Bills are planning for 15%, 33%, and 50% scenarios where, you know, you're talking about a stadium that's anywhere from 25% filled to 50% filled. And, and there's still the scenario that, you know, there's no fans in there at all. And I think that it's interesting. The, the Athletic also put out a story this week, yesterday, um, where the NFL basically put out a memo and said, they're going to allow each team in each city to determine what the attendance policy is going to be. So whatever, you know, however you're dealing with the coronavirus and the numbers and, you know, a percentage like California could allow 15% of people into the, st into the stadium. Uh, somewhere like Jacksonville could, have, could allow 100% into the stadium. I mean, we've obviously seen some of the beaches in Florida and, and how things are going down there. Um, so I think that that obviously brings about a question about, you know, competitive equity and, and what does that mean for maybe the bills who can only put out 15 or 25% uh, capacity of fans compared to Jacksonville who could have, uh, or Miami, a division foe, maybe that can go out there and allow hundred percent of fans. And that's something that, you know, I think the league will have to take a look at uh, a source in the athletic story uh, by Daniel Kaplan yesterday. Um, told him, and I want to read the quote because I think this is an interesting th discussion. Attendance will be a state-by-state, county-by-county thing. It will not be a one-size-fits-all. I wish they would push back the start of the year to October to give us more time to learn from other, uh, from other leagues. And that's a, uh, an NFL source who requested anonymity because the COVID-19 discussions within the league are, are obviously ongoing. But that's something that, you know, I'm advocating for. Like, let's push this season back a little bit. You don't have to rush into it. And I know, um, you know, I, I think it, 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 we're already pushing back Major League Baseball. We're already pushing back the NBA. I mean, the finals are going to start in September, which is, has never happened before. I think that, you know, maybe pushing this thing back and having a chance to have the most 
you know, normalcy within the season that you can have. If that, if, you know, experts within the league think that that's possible, I think that's the way to go. Yeah. And, I, and that might end up being the way to go. I mean, I'm sure that the NFL has a scenario in mind where they could just push it back, whether it's uh, keeping it as a full season and then just pushing the Super Bowl back or trimming a few weeks off the schedule as is. Uh, I, I like what you mentioned though, about the, the, the possibility of some of these stadiums having 50%, 100% while, you know, the bills could end up having a quarter of that stadium. The only good news there is bills fans travel well, and they have a lot of fans in those other cities. So if the Bills fans can't necessarily get to games here in, in Orchard Park, they could travel to those other destinations or they live there. And then maybe the, that would actually help the Bills in some of those road games because it would almost feel like a home game, as we saw last year with games uh, where the crowd kind of overtook some of those stadiums where you would think it would have been more of a 50-50 split or the, the home team would have better fan, fan support. That wasn't the case last year. So maybe that's actually kind of good news for a team like the Bills whose fans travel very well. And, you know, another thing that I think is a big part of this discussion is, you know, player involvement in any type of season. And, you know, Tim Graham from The Athletic put out a really good story yesterday where he talked to a few folks uh, from the Bills, Micah Hyde, Stephen Hauschka, and Harrison Phillips, about their willingness to be a part uh, of a league season starting under the circumstances where people are still testing positive at, you know, a really high rate in different states like Texas and Florida. And we've even seen now some, some teams and players that have gotten together, them starting to uh, contract the, the, the illness and, and maybe starting to pass it on. So, and I think the one tough thing that players are going to have to deal with is the locker room setting, no matter how much you police social distancing, you're around so much all the time. I mean, you're going from meeting room to meeting room to practice field to uh, cafeteria. I mean, you know, Sean McDermott said in, in his last uh, press conference that the, the Bills have been diligently going throughout the facility and game planning with their support staff about how this process is going to play out. So, again, the advantage of time, they're going to have time to plan for this. But if you, if you enter a scenario where you, you want to start in September, which means camp opens at the end of July, and we're a little over a month away from that, and there's, pe there's, there's players with families and children and wives and, and, and for staff, uh, husbands, where you, you could have real concerns about you know, just health and safety concerns entering back into this environment oh without a doubt and you and you heard from some of those players in that article saying you know if it's going to come down to playing this game or being able to be with my family I'm not sure I can I would be choosing the game of football for this season um because you know there's, there's that whole bubble scenario where you kind of keep the players away from their families and that's not what these players signed up for um, but they also have to consider that a lot of these guys have young children at home that could be at risk. They have other family members, Micah Hyde cited uh, grandparents, one that was uh, in remission, I believe, um, with, with, from cancer and things like that. So who, people who could be immunocompromised. So there's just so many layers to this thing. And like you said, there, there's no way that you can go into a locker room and not be shoulder to shoulder with your teammates and then throw in the media because the media is, you know, most likely going to be in there certain times as well. It's just going to be so hard to enforce and to police that it's going to be interesting to see what they implement and what they use from these other sports when, when it comes to be. Uh, but I wouldn't be shocked if at the end of the day, we did see the season get pushed back here to October, like you suggested previously. I would love to talk to some players and, and, and hopefully we have some plans over the next you know, month or so uh, to have a, a player or two on the show. So this will be a great question to ask them. But um, you know, I think that one of the cool things about sports is the way that players and teams can adapt and adjust to circumstances. And, you know, so I, I think that the concern for the environment where, you know, I can't remember who it was that mentioned it, it might've been Sean McDermott or one of the other coaches in the bill staff, or might've been somebody outside of the organization. I just remember this, this quote, and it was a good one that, you know, we're so used to since peewee football playing in front of an audience, there's always that crowd element at high school football games, especially down South. In college, obviously, college football and some stadiums that hold up to, you know, 110, 115,000 people uh, in some uh, unique locations. 
So that's going to be an adjustment period. But I think that there is the ability to adjust to that. And I think that in a lot of ways, the game can evolve in these circumstances. You know what I mean? I, I think it could be more interesting to see the dynamic of the chess match without the, the, the crazy amount of noise that there is. It would be a much more intimate game. And I think that could be fun and interesting. I, I love that element of football, that, that, cr- that crowd noise and that fan involvement and being in the stadium with 70, 80,000. Trust me, you know, being on the beat the last two years, covering all these games, we went to Houston for the playoff game. That's a big piece of it, man. Like, I, we're going to miss it. But you got to make some um, – adjustments you got to make some concessions and i think that there if you look at the bright side of things i think it could be interesting the way that that might play out oh i agree completely hopefully this is the only pandemic that we have to live through so this is like the only year we have to experience that but we've seen other leagues do things too Uh, it was some soccer league that had like cardboard cutouts that you could purchase for twenty dollars and they put your face on like a little cardboard cutout in the stands you saw other leagues that have like stuffed animals and things i don't think the nfl would do that but you know they they did something to fill the crowds up a little bit you could pump in noise you could pump in music it it would at least be interesting to see what the alternative would be for one season but hopefully it is just a one season and and never again type scenario where we we get past covid19 here in, in 2020 and never look back and i think pushing back the season gives you a chance as a league to give yourself a little bit more buffer room in terms of waiting for that vaccine. So, you know, if we're talking about end of 2020, early 2021, if you push the season back even a month, even just a month and give yourself maybe a larger training camp, maybe a seven to eight week training camp where teams report in some type of quarantine to their team facilities, only, you know, be around their family and, and, um, at the facility themselves, make sure your social distancing, masks, all that stuff when possible. I think that then you're giving yourself a chance to get to a point where maybe you can even have a playoffs where there could be full stadiums if there's a vaccine in place, maybe in February or March of next year, and then maybe even truncate and shrink the next off season in preparation for the 2021 season. Yeah, absolutely. And the, and the other plus side to that, like because you said extended training camp, is you're going to get a lot of those reps back that these players lost in, in these OTAs and mini camps, which, you, you know, that, that's pretty important for a team that still has a lot of young pieces as members of their core roster. Don't get me wrong, the Bills have just as many veterans who have been around. They don't necessarily need those reps, but you have a lot of young guys still that that's available reps for them to get in, to get to practice, some new additions, some new faces that could really use it. So, at the end of the day, maybe that is the ultimate solution that will help this team and help the, every NFL team in 2020. That'll do it for this episode. Thank you so much for listening. Please, wherever you get your podcasts, uh, Apple, Spotify, Amazon, uh, Google, wherever you get Stitcher, please subscribe to the podcast. It really helps us out. Rate, review, leave a review. Let us know how you think we're doing. Hopefully it's all good things, all good things. Uh, I always say that line because it's from Frozen and my my little girl loves it. But no, we really appreciate your support for this podcast. We've really enjoyed uh, launching it during this pandemic. It's been giving us uh, something extra to fill the time. uh, And your support, as always, is great. He is Ryan Talbot. I am Matt Perino. We will be be back this week with another episode uh, in this series where we're taking all of your uh, one-off questions in a big giant Bill's mailbag. No live show this week. We will be back next week. We have a really cool uh, guest uh, that we're excited to share with you early next week. And for Ryan Talbot, I'm Matt Perino, and this has been Shout, and we're out.